Nancy Drew, Weirdness at Waverly Academy, a story by Argofomps. Chapter 64, The Pit and the Pendulum. Arg, Nancy said. The doors to the room were sealed, and it looked like she was trapped. A loud metallic sound came from above, and she looked up. Oh no, Nancy said. No, 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 no. From the top of the room, Death's scythe descended. It swung back and forth, as if on a pendulum. On each swing, it fell lower and lower, half an inch, an inch, maybe more. Nancy could do naught but watch in horror as the unstoppable instrument of her inevitable demise came closer and closer and closer. There was only one thing Nancy could think of doing at this point. She pulled out her cell phone and called her boyfriend. Hey, Ned, Nancy said. How's it going? It's fine, Ned said. How's the mystery coming along? I'm almost done, but I need another clue about Edgar Allan Poe, Nancy said. You're the English expert, so I thought I'd ask you. Did Mr. Poe ever write a story about, I don't know, a giant axe falling from the ceiling? An axe? Ned asked. Yeah, an axe which is swinging back and forth and getting lower and lower, Nancy said, noticing that the axe was now only about two feet above her head. And I need this information really quickly. Sounds like the pit and the pendulum, Ned said. That's a story where, how did the person in the story escape? Nancy interrupted. He didn't, Ned said. He got some rats to... What's going on there, Nan? I can barely hear you. The swinging of the axe was loud to begin with, and now that it was much closer, the noise was so great that it made phone conversation impossible. Hold on a second, Ned, Nancy said. She walked over to the other side of the altar, which was as far away from the path of the pendulum as possible. Sorry about that, Nancy said. Something's making a lot of noise here. Anyway, how did he escape? He got some rats to chew the ropes that had him tied down. Ned said. That let him escape the pendulum, but he was still stuck in a torture pit. It wasn't a good situation. Poor fellow, Nancy said. Why was he being tortured? The story doesn't say, Ned said. It starts with him being sentenced to death by torture, but we never learn why. Well, thanks for the information, Nancy said. That really helps. You're welcome, Ned said. But what does the pit and the pendulum have to do with your mystery? Let's just say I may have found a lost book written by Edgar Allan Poe, Nancy said. I'll be back home soon. I'll tell you about it then. Sounds great, Ned said. See ya. Goodbye, Nancy said, before hanging up the phone. She stretched out her arms and said, Okay, sounds like I need to find some rats and... Huh? The pendulum axe reached the ground, then retracted back up to the top of the ceiling. Both exits to the room opened up again. Oh, Nancy said. All I had to do to avoid the axe was step out of its pathway. That was simple. Chapter 65. Captured. Corrine Myers had planned to escape through the hidden tunnel that connected Mel's room and the furnace room. It was a good plan, except for one small problem. Mel Corbliss. No, Mel said, blocking the doorway. I'm not letting you out of here until I get some answers. Mel, you have to let me through, Corrine said. I need to get going. You just came into my room through the wall, Mel said. I demand an explanation. Come on, Mel, it's too long of a story, Corrine said. Now let me pass. The two of them were still arguing when Nancy Drew heroically stumbled into Mel's room, using the same passage Corrine had taken. Don't let her escape, Mel, Nancy ordered. You too? Mel asked. What is this? For Corrine, it's over, Nancy said. I'm calling the headmistress right now. Nancy took out her cell phone and pressed the eighth speed dial number. Hello, Professor Dumbledore, Nancy said. It's Nancy Drew. I just caught the black cat. 
One week later, Nancy was typing on her laptop. Shortly afterwards, Corrine was kicked out of Waverly Academy. From what I heard, her victims are expected to make a full recovery, and they'll be back at school by the time the next semester starts. Hey, Nance, what you doing? Ned Nickerson asked. Writing a book, Nancy said. It's going to be about the mystery I solved last week. I call it Warnings at Waverly Academy. Catchy title, Ned said. What made you decide to start writing a book, though? I got an email from the big publishing company who got the rights to publish the collection of lost Edgar Allan Poe works I found, Nancy said. They said they would love it if I wrote the story of how I found the lost literary masterpiece. Is that right? Ned asked. Maybe I can help you edit it. Ned did help Nancy edit her book. Some of his comments were helpful. Try to be more descriptive here. And some of his comments were not so helpful. Instead of saying the detective called her boyfriend, you should say the detective called her incredibly handsome boyfriend. After about a month, Nancy finished writing the book, and she sent it to the publishers. They had a number of editing suggestions to make, and the book was published the next year, under the pseudonym Carolyn Keene. Nancy's book was a small success. It didn't make the top of the bestseller list, but it was still popular enough that she was asked to write another mystery book. She immediately said yes. If there's one thing Nancy Drew had in steady supply, it was plenty of good mystery stories. The biggest surprise, in Nancy's opinion, was that some video game company out in Washington got the rights to make her book into a computer game. But that's another story. Chapter 66, Graduation Day. Six months later. It was graduation day at Waverly Academy. Nancy had been invited to attend the ceremony, even though she had only been a student there for three days. Of course, Nancy accepted the invitation. She liked being able to see all her friends at Waverly one last time before they went off to their various colleges. Nancy had kept in touch with most of the people at Waverly, so she had some idea of what happened over the past six months. When Mel's roommate recovered and moved back in, they got in a huge fight over the fact that Mel had painted the room pink. That inspired Mel to write a cello piece she called, The Walls Are Pink, Deal With It. Lila was made permanent snack shop monitor after Nancy left. The teachers argued that Leela spent all her time in the rec room anyway, so she might as well make herself useful. Izzy was, well, still Izzy. She managed to get accepted into Harvard, even though she hadn't become the valedictorian. The number of boyfriends she had stolen in her time at Waverly was in the double digits. Rachel and Kim Hubbard were kicked out of Waverly Academy for committing audacious fraud. Thanks to the urging of some alumni, the twins were reinstated as students shortly afterwards. They weren't allowed to join the valedictorian race. The school thought it was unfair for two people to compete as one person, but they didn't care. The girls at Ramsey Hall all got to sit in the front row during the official ceremonies. Everyone looked impressive in their graduation robes. Leela wore a sports jersey over her robe. Mel's robes were pink. Rachel and Kim had matching robes that made them look like twins. Once the commencement address was finished, the headmistress came on stage. Before we hand out the diplomas, there are two very special graduates I have to take note of, the headmistress said. The first is our valedictorian for this year, Paige Griffin. Izzy slumped down in her seat. It is such a ripoff that Paige won, she muttered. She was out of the running for months. All because she found her lost term paper, Leela said. I can't believe Becca, I mean Nancy, gave it to her. It was the right thing to do, Mel shrugged, although I kind of wish she hadn't done it either. However, no one could hear the grumbling of the losers of the valedictorian race over the loud applause that Paige received. Paige went on stage to get her special diploma and award. And our second special graduate, the headmistress continued, 
is none other than our good friend, Nancy Drew. Nancy fell out of her seat. What? she shouted. For special services to the school, and for her unparalleled achievement in the field of American literature, we are pleased to present her with this honorary diploma, the headmistress said. I graduated? Nancy asked. Wahoo! I graduated! Nancy ran on stage to get her diploma, and everyone applauded, even though she tripped over a microphone cord on her way up. Getting the diploma, and the party afterwards, made it the best day Nancy ever had at Waverly Academy. Well, that trip was worth it, Nancy said to her father, once she had returned home. I'm now an official Waverly Academy alumnus. I'm very proud of you, Carson Drew said. Who would have thought I could graduate from a school even though I was only there for three days, Nancy asked. And Waverly's a really prestigious New York school. This'll look great on my resume. You might have a diploma, but I'm still expecting you to pass all your classes at River Heights High, Carson Drew reminded his daughter. From what your teachers say, you still have plenty of unfinished makeup work to do. Darn, Nancy said. The end.